The last video in our series for selections and mass require the use of certain imagery. Um, as always, you can kind of sub them out for something that's similar, but if you'd like to follow along with me, I'm going to use this image of the Eiffel Tower and this image of the ice cream cone that can be found on our shared files. Um, the other two images that I'm using, the image of the clouds and the image of the clouds with the, the farm or whatever it happens to be there, I just pulled those off of Creative Commons. So I went to search.creativecommons.org and I did a search for Google and I just looked for images with skies so that I could use them for a project because I didn't have anything in my stock photography that I thought could work for this instance. And so if you'd like to pull them up, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll get started with the first image, which is the Eiffel Tower. And so there are two ways to create a layer mask and it's important to remember that a layer mask is non-destructive. It is attached to a layer you're able to paint with it with black, white, and gray, and each one of those colors does something different. White is what you keep, black is what disappears, um, and then gray, or depending on the shade of gray, creates levels of transparency. So we're going to focus on the black and white um, aspect of uh, layer mass, but if I have time, I will kind of show you how gray can come into play. And so when you use gray, what will happen is whatever is beneath this layer will blend with the current layer in some some amount because the, the darker your gray is, the more your layer is going to disappear and the lighter your gray is, the less your layer is going to disappear. And so before we get started here, we have to be able to see through to something, right? Because if I paint away the background, I need to see something. And so what I want to do is I want to duplicate my background layer because that is going to be my top layer. And then I want to create a new layer that's in between. We'll call that layer one. Um, you can fill that with a color, or what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to create a solid color fill layer. Um, you can use your adjustment layers at the bottom of your layers panel and choose solid color. And then I'll choose an orange color similar to the one in the video. This is something we'll learn about in chapter 12, but it's a non-destructive way to quickly change colors. And so if I change my mind and I don't want it to be orange, I could just double click on it and make it red or purple or blue or green or back to orange and I don't really have to do much um, to make that change. It's pretty easy change. And so now it's time to make our layer mask and there's two approaches to making a layer mask. You can make your selection first and say everything I'm selecting I want to keep and everything that I'm not selecting I want to trash or I want to disappear because you're not actually making it trash. And so we'll do that first and then I'll undo that and I'll show you option two which is to create a blank layer mask and then hand paint or hand fill in areas of color using black, white, and shades of gray. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my quick selection tool. And so since this video is not focusing on the creation and the refinement of selections, I'm just going to let it make kind of a quick selection really fast. And I'm not going to worry too much about how perfect it is. I just want to kind of get it roughed in so that we have something to work with. It's doing a pretty good job. I'm going in small chunks. so just small kind of sweeps across your image. Um, let me zoom in. Let me see. Kind of miss a little bit of area right there. Let me zoom in this way. And just make sure it got the most most of, of the Eiffel Tower because anything that you don't select is going to turn orange because we are going to create a layer mask that shows through to the layer beneath and the layer beneath happens to be orange. Okay, so now that we have created our selection on the layers panel, if you choose the create layer mask icon, create new mask, um, it will automatically create a layer mask. It'll be attached to the background layer because that's a layer that I have selected currently. And it will look similar to the one that's attached to the fill layer, except for mine will have black and white on it because I have a selection. Anything selected will be white, Anything not selected, like this area right here, God, I caught that, will be orange. And so if I select a new layer mask, it creates the layer mask, it attaches it to the layer, all the black stuff has disappeared and allowed me to see through down to the orange layer, and anything that was white remained um, solid, and I can see the original image in my picture. And so I should have been a little bit more careful down here at the bottom, but I got a little bit too much, so more than I wanted um, became orange. And so that's the first option. The second option, so I'm going to undo, edit undo or edit step backwards until we do not have our layer mask and I'm going to uh, deselect the selection by choosing command D. 
The second option is to not make a selection and just to select layer and choose the create layer mask icon. It will almost look like nothing happened. If we look at our picture, it looks exactly the same. But if I look at my layer, I now have a layer mask attached to it. And I know that white means I can see that part of a layer. And black means it will disappear. And so if I wanted part of this to disappear, I would have to choose a paintbrush. And so there's a paintbrush on your tools panel. I would have to choose black, white, or some shade of gray. And so I have black selected for my color down here. And now if I paint on the layer mask, not the layer, so if I select a layer and I start painting, I'm just painting black. But if I select the layer mask, and so you can see that now it's selected, and I start painting black, so I want to make sure that my opacity is at 100%. Every time I paint black, I will create a hole that opens up between my layer and the layer beneath it. And I'm getting this soft fuzzy edge because I have a brush that has a zero hardness. If I change it to 100% hardness and I draw across, I get a straight line. And so for what I want to do, I just want to have soft edges. And so I'm going to change it to have a 0% hardness. And I'm going to kind of fill in. And I'm not painting orange. I know it looks like I'm painting orange. But if I look over at the layer mask, as I paint, watch, you can see it kind of in real time. You can see I'm painting black onto the layer mask, which is creating a hole that shows through to the orange layer. And so I'm just going to kind of rough in. I don't want to go too close to the Eiffel Tower just yet. But I'm going to kind of rough in and get as close as possible to my image. Let's zoom out a little bit. And everything that I paint will create a hole that shows through to the layer beneath it. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to repeat this everywhere that I want to see orange. When I get to areas where my brush is too big, I'll use the left bracket and I'll make it smaller. And then you can kind of paint in these areas. You would want to be more careful than I'm being right now. Go around and paint them. And then once you kind of rough it in, you can come over to the edge of the Eiffel Tower. And you'd want to be more careful than I'm being because I'm going very fast. Um, but you can eventually paint out all the areas that you don't want to see showing through to the layer beneath it. And so the benefit of this is that after you create your layer mask, and this is a benefit of a layer mask, not just this type of, of process for creating a layer mask, is if you decide that you don't want orange background, you can edit the layer beneath and you could make it a pink background, or a red background, or a blue background. Or you could say that you don't even want that background. You could say that you want a picture. And so if I copy, um, Command A or edit, or I'm sorry, select all. Um, we'll select the whole picture and then Command C or edit copy will copy all these pixels. And I can bring them into my other document by choosing Command V or edit paste. Um, and I could paste this image beneath the layer that has, oh, I, I hit paste twice. Let's delete one layer. Um, I can paste it beneath the layer that has a layer mask and now it will show through onto that layer. Now that image has a lot more pixels than this image and so I'd actually have to do like something like edit free transform. It's a big picture and I have to make the picture smaller. I can't see where the handlebars are. It's a huge image or it's a tiny image and I don't want to assume but I'm pretty sure the Eiffel Tower is a small image. And so you can make the image as small as you need it for your Eiffel Tower image. And then you can slide it around until the right part of the clouds are showing through. And you can use that to change the background of your image. I don't know why. My Photoshop's working a little funny right now. I've double clicked, which should accept the changes. And I've hit return, which should also, but I think it's being a little funny. Um, but now, because I'm showing through from the first layer, through the layer mask to the second layer, I can say that I want clouds. Or I could drag that layer beneath the orange layer and say, well, no, I want an orange background. I kind of like the cloud ones because even though we didn't refine that selection, it still looks pretty natural. Okay, I'm going to close out of that image because I don't need it anymore. And now we are going to talk about the ice cream image. And so I'm going to do the same thing I just did. And so um, if you're starting to feel comfortable with layer masks, you don't have to watch me do this three or four times. But I'm going to repeat it for those of you who want some practice. 
And so the second example that I gave in the slideshow is I have this ice cream cone. Maybe I want to change the background for whatever my purpose is. is. And so I'm always going to duplicate the background before I make any changes. And I'll use the quick selection tool to make a quick selection of the ice cream. I have no idea how you're going to see this on the video. It's hard for me to see it in actual Photoshop. But maybe I'm just getting old and going blind. Let's hope that's not the case. And so just make a quick selection. I'm just going really fast because the objective of this video is not to make the selection. The objective is to show you how to create layer masks. So get the finger here. Okay, so we'll pretend that I've refined that and it's perfect, but now I have the selection. And if I were to create a new layer mask via the new layer mask icon on the layers panel, all the white stuff is the stuff that I had selected and all the black stuff is what should disappear. The background's turned on though, so I'm seeing through the ice cream image to the ice cream image, and so it looks like nothing happened. But if we turn the background layer off, you can see it's now on its own layer. You can also create new layers. Maybe you want to create a gradient layer. Mm, let's choose that color, and let's make it radial, and let's make it bigger. There we go. There's our ice cream image. And so now we have the same idea. We've created a hole in the first image. It shows through to the back image. And I'm free to change that image. I could even, I can even change it to be clouds like I did in the previous example. And so I could grab a cloud image. Let's do this guy here. So Command or Control A to select all. Command C or Control C to copy. And then we can Command or Control V to paste. And so this image is actually really small, and so I'm going to do something that's bad practice. So don't actually do this if it happens to you. But I'm going to choose Edit Free Transform, and I'm going to stretch it, which we learned the name of stretching an image to make it bigger and making up the pixels to fill in the gap is called upsampling, and it's kind of bad practice. But I could do that for the purpose of the demonstration. And now I have a new background, and I'm free to move the background back and forth until the clouds are in the place that I want them to be for my particular project. Okay, let's do this one more time. So now I have an image, but I don't want to combine two images. I just want to create kind of a cool funky border. Maybe I'm designing a postcard, or maybe I just want to print this and put it in a picture frame, but I want to create a border on it. So when I print it, it has a nice kind of matte look to it. So to do that, you can make a selection of the area that you want to keep, and so about that much I think would be good to keep and then the outside will become the border. If I create the layer mask right now though, what I have selected I'll keep and what I have not selected I will lose. And so in our case I have the wrong part of the image selected. So I'll choose select and inverse. And now I have, you can tell if you look at the corner, I have the border selected because both sides of the border are selected. It's like a big circle going around the outside. Now if you create a new layer mask, so let's duplicate the layer before we do anything. I'm going to go ahead and turn the original background off. If you create a new layer mask, you have created a hole in your image that shows through to the one beneath it. But this is not like what we did for the example in the slideshow, right? In the example in the slideshow, I didn't want to get rid of the inside of the image. I wanted to create um, a colored border. And so if that's what you're interested in doing, instead of creating a layer mask on the background layer, you need to create a new layer. And so you can create a new layer or you can create a new um, solid fill color adjustment layer. Whatever you need to do, you need to fill that layer with a color. And so I'll do it via edit and fill for now until we get better at using adjustment layers. And you can choose the color that you want it to be. You can even kind of come out here and you can choose the color from the image that you'd like it to be. That is really bright orange, so it's a little darker. And so now you end up with two layers and they're both solid, so you can't see through the first layer onto the background layer. But you could create a layer mask like we did for the previous example. So you can make a selection. The area you have selected is going to become a layer mask, so I will switch that selection and do select inverse. So now I have the background selected, and now, finally, when I select the new layer mask icon, it will create a layer mask that the black part, the inside, disappears. The uh, outside, the white part, the one I wanted to keep, remains. And now I could go to the background layer, and I could move this image back and forth. But before I do that, I want to show you something that we haven't learned yet. 
When you have multiple layers and you go to click something, um, you want to be able to click the item that's on the layer that you have selected, but sometimes you want Photoshop to just figure out what you're trying to move. And so in the top right hand corner of your window, when you have the move tool selected, there is something that says auto select. And if you have that selected, which I believe is the default, and you click and drag to move around the, the sky, it should automatically move it around because it realizes there's nothing in front of it. If you have it not selected or not checked off or checked and you have the orange layer selected and you try to move the background, it's going to try to move the orange layer which can be really frustrating. And so as a general rule of thumb, I would leave this auto select selected and then just turn it off when it's, when it's bothering you and it's causing problems because most times it's better to have it selected than not. And so now I'm going to select the background copy layer and move the background around because the bottom's getting cut off and I don't want that. So I'm going to move it up and move it into position until I can see the part of the image that I want to see. And it's fully editable, right? I can drag it and I can move it and I can rotate it if I wanted to. And as long as I don't move it too far, I can put it anywhere I want because I'll just see that part of the image through the layer mask. The last thing that I did in the example was I applied layer effects to this to make it look like it's a beveled um, border. And so I did that by using the effects tab at the bottom of the layers panel. I chose bevel and emboss. And then you can see the settings because uh, it, it remembers your last setting. And so I went to bevel and emboss. I chose an inner bevel and it's a smooth bevel. I made the depth really big. So watch what happens when it's small. You, can, you can't even see it, right? And the bigger I make it, the percentage, I can see more and more bevel. And so I just made it like really big because I kind of like the look of it. Um, you can make the direction up or down. Uh, I kind of liked up better. I increased the size and the softness. And that's basically all I did. I just kind of played around until I got something that I liked. And then you can hit OK. And now it looks like I have a framed picture that I could print and I could put in a picture frame. Um, it looks like a matted picture that I could print and put in a picture frame. So that wraps up our lecture on layer masks. And so um, make sure that you go through this lecture as many times as it takes to fully understand everything that was covered. There were 58 slides in this lecture. It's a huge lecture that we spend a week to two weeks of the semester solely dedicated on so that you can practice it over and over and over again. I am here for you. Your teachers are here for you. If you're having trouble with any of these concepts, selecting hair, um, making selections, making color range selections, in focus selections, um, now's the time to ask questions. So um, we're going to use the same skill set every, every lecture from now until the end of the semester because we're going to be doing something different, but it's going to require some sort of selection or some sort of layer mask to be applied.